Hi, I'm Song Yu, and I'm excited to present Convolutional Occupancy Networks. This is a joint work with Michael, Lars, Mark, and Andreas. We consider the following problem setting in this project. The input is either a noisy and sparse point cloud or a coarse voxelization of a shape. The neural network tries to predict the 3D shape given the input. Now we want to ask, what is a good 3D output representation so it can be easily predicted by a neural network? Traditionally, learning-based 3D reconstruction approaches use discrete output representations, such as voxels, point clouds, and meshes. However, each of these representations has certain disadvantages. Voxel-based representations are usually limited to relatively low resolutions due to memory issues. Point-based representation lose topology. And mesh-based representations are often difficult to predict using neural networks, which either need a template mesh or leads to non-watertight reconstructions. Several papers from CVPR 2019, for example, Occupancy Networks, introduced a novel representation where instead of representing the shape explicitly, they represent the output surface implicitly as the decision boundary of a neural network classifier to distinguish inside points from outside. Although this representation is able to produce smooth output and handle complex topology, it still has some limitations that stem from its structure. The occupancy network encodes the input into a global feature, and then a 3D sample point is fed into a fully connected network to predict its occupancy given the global feature. However, the global latent code here does not capture local information in the input, which leads to overly smooth geometry. What's more, a vanilla fully connected network is used to represent possible shapes which does not exploit, for example, translational equivalence property that are present in many input domains. As a consequence, the implicit model works well for simple objects, but poorly on complex things, as we can see here. The question now becomes, how can we reconstruct large-scale things using these implicit representations? We propose convolutional occupancy networks. The idea is to exploit the advantages of convolution operations and combine with implicit representations. Given some kind of input, for example a sparse and noisy point cloud of a shape, we define a 2D feature plane, in this case it's the ground plane. The feature for a particular pixel on the plane is acquired by aggregating features of those points within this column using a point net encoder. From this process, we now have a local information on the 2D feature plane. And then, we use a 2D unit to further process the feature plane, which integrates the inductive biases into the model. After having the processed feature plane, we can now query the feature at every 3D point in the space using bilinear interpolation in this 2D canonical feature plane. Now, because we have a feature with richer local information for every query point, we only require a shallow network to take in a 3D location and its feature, and then predict the occupancy. We can also do the feature encodings for multiple canonical planes, for example the plane in x, y, and z direction. Now the final feature for point P is simply the sum of the features queried from these three feature planes. In addition to projecting into canonical planes, we can also use a volumetric representation and encode the local information into the volumetric space, as shown in the red box here. We then have a 3D unit that operates on this 3D course representation, and we again have a readout unit in the form of a shallow occupancy network. But in order to obtain features for a particular locations, we now query the feature from adjacent voxels using trilinear interpolation. Here is the direct comparison between the occupancy network on the top and our convolutional method on the bottom. We can see for our method, the features are not a global code anymore, but they are distributed in 3D space. 
they can benefit from the translational equivalence of either 2D or 3D convolutional networks. Moreover, since the features of our method have richer local information, we only require shallow, fully connected network. Let's now look at some results. We first want to see if our convolutional method can also improve the quality of object level reconstruction. It turns out this is indeed the case, in particular for objects with complicated shapes. Our input could either be a noisy point cloud or a coarse voxelization of an object. We can see the original occupancy networks lose quite some details, whereas our convolutional models here preserve much more details. We also observed that using our convolutional occupancy networks now highlighted in the red box leads to not only high validation IOU but also much faster training. Now let's look at the results on scene level reconstruction. We first generate a synthetic room dataset using ShapeNet objects. We train and evaluate on this dataset and the input is a noisy point cloud. We can see that the occupancy network produces smooth results, but fails on recovering details. The other baseline method, screen post on surface reconstruction, leads to very noisy reconstructions. And our method produces detailed and smooth 3D reconstructions. We can also take the model trained on synthetic rooms and evaluate on the real-world scanner dataset. And the results illustrate that our model can generalize from synthetic to real data. We also test on very large scenes. Because we have a fully convolutional model, we can scale these two scenes as large as multiple 3D dataset. We trained on small crops from our synthetic room dataset and evaluate on such a large scene in the sliding window manner. This fully convolutional approach can scale to any scene because we can load sliding window into memories as we desire, and then erase them once processed. The results are then stitched together. On the right is a fly-through video for a reconstruction of a two-floor building in the multiple 3D dataset. As we can see, our method is able to reconstruct such large-scale indoor scene with fine details by training only on synthetic crops. To conclude, our convolutional occupancy networks can be scaled and generalized from synthetic to real-world things with any size and can be trained faster than the original occupancy networks. However, inherited from convolution operations, our method does not have the property of rotational equivalence and is only translational equivalent with respect to the defined voxel size. More information including code and data can be found in our project page. Thank you.